Hey everyone, I'm Diana Davison, advocate for the falsely accused and wrongfully convicted. Now I've just moved to Toronto and I'm still settling in, but I'm working with a bunch of lawyers, um, local lawyers and of course helping people across Canada and down in the States who are all um, falsely accused and some cases of wrongful convictions. And I have, basically what I do is I try to improve access to justice and a large part of that is helping people figure out how they can best help themselves and their lawyers. But one of the things, one of the questions I was asked to answer this week, and I'm just going to do a short video because it's getting kind of late. I was busy watching the Raptors game. Um, and to some degree, watching, uh, you know, rooting for a team is kind of like uh, thinking that we're making progress in the legal system, where things seem to be going really well and all of a sudden they all go to crap. Um, but, uh, you know, it's a battle we have to keep fighting, and so I'm going to explain to you how we're going about doing that. Uh, one of the things that's going on in Canada right now is we had regulations that were passed that changed rules of evidence in criminal courts and they're unconstitutional. I believe they're unconstitutional. We've had a challenge that was put before the courts. So the question was, why this case? And of course, from the moment that those regulations were made law, uh, the new rules of evidence, they were, if they're unconstitutional, unconstitutional for everybody. So why doesn't everybody challenge them? And it's an interesting question, uh, um, you know, not being a lawyer myself, what I can tell you from my perspective is, first of all, you have to get standing in front of the court, meaning you have to have a case that has a complaint about why their evidence was blocked. You want it to be a really good case, because if you take a, a case that isn't very strong or that, uh, you know, possibly it's, uh, your, your trial would be fine without the evidence or whatever. You, you want to get the right case to bring, first of all. So that means a case where you've got compelling evidence that the accused person has that the complainant hasn't revealed to police already. And then that evidence is being questioned and potentially barred in court. So finding the right case to fight for is part of the issue. Of course, in the meantime, everybody going to, to trial under these regulations, if they're unconstitutional, is not getting a constitutional trial. And if at some point, hopefully, the uh, Supreme Court throws these new laws out, then it doesn't mean that everybody who was convicted in the meantime is going to have their convictions overturned. So this is part of the reason people say that we shouldn't call it a justice system. Of course, there's the advocates for the um, uh, victims, be they victims of somebody convicted or alleged victims of somebody going to trial, who would say that the, uh, the problems of justice go in the other direction. This is one of the things that makes it so important for people who advocate for uh, the falsely accused or who um, simply just try to approach this in terms of due process rights, uh, which the term due process uh, is not as compelling and as exciting as you know, claims of living in a rape culture. So people who are advocating for alleged victims tend to get a lot more um, public support because their terminology is a lot more hyperbolic. But due process is a hard one um, system. Like it's like our, the way our, our justice system is crafted, all these things that are being called unfair for victims are things that were built into the system for very important reasons. And it's part of our democracy and it's, it's part of what keeps us um, you know, free citizens and gives us the, a sense of the not the, that innocent people won't be convicted. Innocent people um, never expect to be charged with a serious crime. So part of resolving these conflicts of issues, these interests, is to have people sit down together and talk about the fact that, yeah, I do know that there are victims of rape, of, uh, actual victims of rape, and some of them quite heinous acts and very violent acts, but they have to also admit that there's, that there's an interest in making sure that um, innocent people don't go to jail. And uh, unfortunately, in our society, everyone's being polarized so that we can't sit down together, and uh, any attempt to do so results in personal attacks being called, uh, I'm, I'm called a, a self-hating woman all the time, a misogynist, just simply for caring about the justice system. And that's one of the things that I'm trying to work on as well. And so some people have criticized me for um, not doing the same kind of videos I've done in the past. And um, it's like they're saying I'm slacking off on calling women out for their um, dishonesty and so on. But it is important to not... Um, 
I guess, reject uh, some of the things that I believe to be true, but to, to try and um, become more approachable for people. And I think that um, working with lawyers is uh, an important part of that, that uh, we're, I'm not just a person uh, with an opinion, now I'm gaining more and more experience in terms of um, shaping my arguments in the best way possible. So that's one of the things I want to do with my channel is I want to help other people to not just express themselves but to, to frame their arguments in a way that um, is defensible all the way through a court of law and um, to, get, to get better at um, you know, using the principles and, and actually I think remembering the principles behind our justice system, the hard won um, battles that have been fought in order to put these protections in place and to remind people that even though um, possibly a, a guilty person might end up going free by protecting these rights of an accused person, that um, this hypothetical innocent person, and I've actually seen feminists talk about hypothetical innocent men, they're not hypothetical, that um, the the um, presumption of innocence is there for a reason and we have to remind people of that and we have to get better at explaining it and that's one of the things that I'm trying to get lawyers to and, and you know judges to do as well is to help remind the public why we have these principles and why they're so important. So uh, hopefully I answered the question about um, why this specific case in Canada, I'll put a link to it below, and I'll also put a link to my nonprofit, The Lighthouse Project, below. It is crowdfunded, I'm crowdfunded, so um, all the work that I do comes from, um, you know, support from people who understand the issues and um, want to help make our world a better and safer place for everybody. Uh, and what I do is dependent on your support. So I'll put links to that below, but also this case. And I, I'm going to put a couple of other links to um, cases that have come up in Canada since this legislation was passed. Just to show you one of the problems, um, if, you, if you check out the links, when uh, lawmakers pass these new rules and they don't think about how they're going to be applied, that there's a bunch of other, um, you know, problems that come up where then everybody who's going to court, lawyers included, are going, oh, well, I don't really know how to apply this. Um, so now I have to give uh, a complainant the right to a third party standing in this evidence hearing, well, how much notice do I have to give them? And so all these things are slowing down our, our, our legal system and um, keeping people caught up in the system, both complainants and the accused person for longer than they have to be because lawmakers aren't, uh, you know, they're burying a lot of these things like these particular laws were in the middle of an omnibus bill, just kind of buried right in the middle of it and they didn't get the proper attention. And one of the ways we get proper attention on these issues is to have people like me doing uh, videos and also writing articles and I'll put a link to where I am published as a columnist on the Post Millennial. So that's my video for the week and I uh, will uh, talk to you again next week. Take care everyone.